In this movie, we're going to talk about summaries. Summary functions are essentially decided by the groups that you've chosen. In our report 2, the report we've been developing along, we have a group 1, which is division, which is the first thing it groups by. The second thing it groups by is the revenue transaction date, which we delved into. And then we added a group by office name. So our report is broken up by first division, then by date, and then by actual office. If you don't have any groups, you really can't insert any summary fields. The one field we did insert was the revenue amount field. Summary functions are kind of tricky in a way, and deceptively simple. For example, let's insert a new summary field aside from revenue amount. In this case, let's go ahead and choose office name. Now, the type of field we choose dictates which summary we're allowed to use in Crystal. Also, we can choose the summary location down here. In this case, we can choose to add it to the group footer level, or choose a specific group we want this for, or add to all group levels, which is what we're going to do. Now, if we're choosing a text field, we get the following options in terms of summaries. We can choose a maximum, a minimum, a count, a distinct count, a mode, nth largest, etc., etc. Let's go ahead and choose count and press OK. Notice how it placed it right above my existing. We're going to go ahead and drag these fields over so it makes a little more sense. That way they all kind of line up. And then let's go ahead and insert another summary field as well. So we go to Insert, Menu, choose Summary, and we can choose Office Name, and we're going to Distinct Count as opposed to Count. And in this case, we're not going to add it to all levels. I'm going to show you how to do it manually on the report screen. We're going to stick it in the report footer. Go ahead and press OK. Now, it's placed our distinct count here, and we need it to move to the right of the original count that we've already inserted. After you've done so, right-click on that very same field and say Copy. Move your mouse exactly into the Group section right above, right-click, and hit Paste. Your mouse will then be highlighted with a box, and go ahead and click in that area. And go ahead and repeat for each section. That's the second way to get your summaries around if you need to. Crystal automatically adjusts for where you paste the summary based on the group that it's in. So even though we had a grand total at the bottom, you're going to see a total for division, then a total for the revenue date, and then a total for the group footer 3, which is our office name. Now let's go ahead and click on Preview. And let's go scroll up and click on East. Take us to the very top. Now Charlotte, that's our subgroup for 1999, made this much revenue and it said it had a count of the office as 182, but we have a distinct count of 1. This is where you have to be careful with your summaries. This is counting the number of times it occurs in the database itself, so an actual physical count. So it's a whole list of Charlottes, and if there's 182, it counts that. But distinct count says, well, if they're all the same, they really only count as 1. These are some of the things you have to look out for when you're using these built-in functions. Now let's go ahead from our preview and let's click on the revenue amount and choose edit summary. You can highlight these one at a time and change them as you see fit. Notice when we have an actual number to deal with, our choices increase greatly. If you're dealing with an actual number, you get sum, average, sample variance, standard deviation, maximum, minimum, count, distinct count, correlation with, covariance with, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and choose maximum, for example to illustrate what max will do for our group 2 revenue amount. And press OK. Now we're no longer summarizing, but we did search the list of transactions and found the one that was highest, meaning there was one transaction in 1999 for $803. The beautiful thing again is we can also hit Control and Z and undo what we did. Notice it only changed the group that I had clicked on. If you need them all to change, you have to do them one by one or reinsert them, as I showed you before. Now summary functions come in handy. Once they're actually on your report palette, you can use them in formulas, you can change them, you can add, subtract, or make adjustments to as you see fit, all based of course on which group it happens to be in. They're treated as separate objects, meaning that if you do it to one in one group and you have three or four groups, you have to do it to each one in turn. 
A lot of summary functions never get really beyond summarizing and min max. The point that you have to keep in mind is your summaries are only as good as the groups that you've chosen. Without those, there's nothing really to summarize except at a grand total level. For example, if I go up to this and I click, it'll take me to the grand total here. If I go to the bottom, I'll have 9,949 occurrences of every office name. It's also the same, as you can see, as the record count at the bottom right-hand portion of the screen. But when I look at my distinct count, I only have 13 offices. Mm, lucky 13.